Hello everyone. This is Rajesh Pichaimani and I'm a Solutions Architect at Amazon Web Services. In this webinar, I'm going to do a demo of establishing communication across resources, sitting in two different AWS accounts using the concept of Transit Gateway and Transit Gateway Peering. The agenda is going to be a quick walkthrough of the architecture, how the components are placed, and what are they, and switch the session to the console and go through the different steps that are needed to establish this and also do a kind of verification. And finally, wrap up the session with the references. Throughout this demo, I might be using the concept of TGW and Transit Gateway. It refers both of them are same. So just as a disclaimer here. In this architecture, we're going to have two accounts, AWS accounts, account number 1618 and account 7107. This is just a number just for differentiation purposes. In the left side of the AWS account, I have one VPC, which is custom created, user created one in the 10 subnet. I picked a random subnet in this VPC to create a compute resource with this IP address, as you're seeing here. Likewise, in the other side AWS account, I have chosen the default VPC just to have a slight differentiation, but it's still the concept is going to work, right? So I'm choosing the default VPC and then a compute inside the default VPC subnet. In both of these accounts, I have a, created a transit gateway. And to establish this communication, this peering is going to play an important role. So that's uh, what we are going to see in the demo here. Let me switch to the console to walk through this demo. In this first part of the demo, I'm going to focus most of the information in, with reference to the left side of the architecture, the one that is the AWS account 1618. First, I want to focus this attention on the transit gateways, what needs to be done, and what are the key important configurations, at least in the context of this uh, architecture. First one is obviously creating a transit gateway. And as you are seeing here, one has been created and its status is available. Creating a transit gateway is very simple. Just give a name and an optional uh, description and then create it. If you are familiar with the other AWS networking constructs, uh, you will see a lot of similarity, just like you have done in the IGW Internet Gateway, something similar here, right? Creating a, uh, another gateway logical construct. So we created this construct. What next? The next one is transit gateway attachments. Now this transit gateway has to know what VPC it is going to communicate. Obviously, when you're planning to use Transit Gateway, the whole purpose is to have some VPC to VPC communication. So it should know among tens of thousands of VPC that you have already established, you might need to have some of them in a certain Transit Gateway and some in another Transit Gateway, right? So this Transit Gateway should know which VPCs are going to be attached. So that's what the first attachment is going to be, the VPC attachment. And there are different attachments that I'll just show you in just a minute here. And I also have created a peer attachment, which means that this transit gateway residing in account 1618 has to communicate to the other transit gateway sitting in a different account. You can think of this as an equivalent of a VPC peering concept. Very similar in the, the example analogy, but um, uh, you get the idea here. You can do the create at attachment after the transit gateway has been created. So you should see them in the dropdown list here. There are different attachment types, VPC, VPN, peering, connection, etc. In this example, we are using the VPC type and then the peering connection, right? Whenever you choose the VPC attachment, obviously it goes in a logical sense that what VPC are we going to attach? And I'm going to choose this one 
and this has already been created, but I'm just giving an example here. Okay. And this is the one that is uh, default PPC sitting in this AWS account. This has been attached, uh, created, and the state is available as well. The third step here is the route tables. Um, talking about the route tables, if you recollect your experiences in creating the route tables on a subnet, on different subnets within a VPC, etc., something similar here, you will have a default route table for the transit gateway. You may choose to use this for experimentation. However, when you go into production, you will have to have much finer control, and that's where you create you know, separate route tables, transit gateway route tables, and associate and propagate based on your needs. Again, for this example, I'm choosing the existing route table. The first tab, you see the association. These are already pre-created as a part of creating the transit gateway attachments the, through the peering attachment and the VPC attachment. Propagation indicates that the VPC that we have attached the routes of those VPCs should be known to this transit gateway, right? So that's what the attachment is. It's already associated and propagated as well. Coming to the routes tab, by default, this would have been, not by default, but because we have already created the attachments, and this one you will already see in the entry, this 10 network. This is a local one that was propagated by the VPC attachment. So whatever the subnets that we had in the VPC, now the transit gateway is aware of it. However, this transit gateway does not know anything about the remote connection, right? It does not know what network it's, what sided block is, and how to reach. That's what we have created the static route of this one. That's done through create static route. I gave the sided block of the remote side and then chose the peering transit gateway, right? It has to just forward, going from left to right. That has been created and kept it here, and you're seeing them in this entry as well. Those were the three uh, minimum configuration to get to this level for this example here. The other one is going back to the VPCs. As I mentioned that I have a compute instance under the custom VPC, this is the one. One thing we have to make aware of this VPC is, as of now, this VPC does not know how to reach the 172.31, right? So we have to instruct the route table in this subnets make by making this entry, 172.31. It has to go to TGW VPC attachment. Very similar to IGW, we have, you might have already experienced that anything to reach to internet, you use the IGW, the internet gateway. However, this being a specific subnet within your organization or your partner, etc., it has to go through a specific TGW VPC attachment. And that can be done by creating, uh, editing the route, giving this sided block, choosing this transit gateway, and then the selecting the one from the drop-down list. So you can do this, add a route, provide your subnet. And if I draw, pick here, transit gateway, and then the transit gateway VPC attachment. Okay. That's how this entry has been created um, and kept it earlier. Before we start with the, um, with the ping test, just make sure that the security group and the ACL are cleared off to pass through the ping, uh, ping connectivity check. And you can lock them um, after doing all of the checks. But when you do it for the first time, we want to ensure that the configuration is correct and the traffic is intended and routed the way that you are intending, right? So that's why you just make sure that those ports are being uh, cleared off for allow. So I'm going to connect to this instance and I have kept it already open here. This is the resource on the other side of the AWS account. So we are pinging from the local left AWS account compute resource to the right side. And 
as you are seeing here, ping connectivity is successful, meaning like the configuration that have been made on the transit gateway and uh, the VPC subnets are working fine. Furthermore, to validate the point that those routes are actually the val valid routes, what I'm going to do is go back to the VPC route table first and remove this entry just to show that traffic is flowing because of this route entry, right? So I can go to edit routes and remove them and save changes. Now this compute instance sitting in one of the subnet in this VPC does not know how to reach the 172 net. Ideally, the ping should have stopped and let's see how it's happening. Now you're seeing the ping doesn't proceed any further and it's waiting. Okay. I'm going back here and um, bring back that route one more time. Ping. Transit gateway and then the transit gateway VPC attachment, save changes. Now that we brought the entry back into this original situation and in an ideal situation, it should restore back. So you're seeing the ping has been restored. Okay. One more check on the transit gateway route tables. I mentioned that this route has been added as a part of static route. I'm going to remove this route to see if the ping stops and then restore back to see if the ping rest comes back again, right? Click on this route, the static route, actions, delete static route, delete. In a few seconds, this should be gone here. Okay, that entry is removed. So again, even if the traffic passed the VPC, came to the VPC uh, attachment, and the transit gateway doesn't know how to get to the remote side. It doesn't have any route entries. In this condition, the ping should be stopped. And it'll take just a few seconds to propagate that. Come back here, yeah, refresh. Okay, you see the ping has stopped. And let's go back and restore this static route again in the transit gateway. I'm going to use the peering attachment as I mentioned earlier. Routes. Okay, you see this entry has been restored back after we tried validating by deleting it. In a few minutes, you will see this restored in just a second. While this is happening, um, let me switch back to the other AWS account to show you what are the configurations. In fact, you will see some similar configurations on the transit gateway, transit gateway attachments, except that the route entries are uh, exactly the mirror opposite, right? So let's validate that. You will see the transit gateway attachment 7107, as I mentioned here. Uh, attachments, two attachments have been created, identical but different names and it's been attached to different IDs as well. The route tables, the route entries, okay. Even though you see the cider blocks, the similar one, but then they are flipped exactly opposite. Whatever has been created as a static route in the earlier account is now a propagated account because it is local to this account and I had to create this static entry 10 slash 24 as a static route because for the return path, okay? And 
that's the main thing uh, in this second account that i have done flipping the flipping the route entries conceptually it's the same thing whatever we have done on the primary account is going to be done here and then establish the peering connection okay and also going back to the vpc it also has the um, identical routes being added for the remote end going back to my original uh, aws account for a quick check on the ec2 instance connect so now the ping is restored after we have added the transit gateway route table um pointing back to the peering connection so this uh, this proves the fact that whatever the configuration that we have done on the transit gateway entries VPC entries and uh, um, the security group clearance on the ports and protocols for experimentation sake work perfectly fine. Okay. Now let me switch back to the presentation for wrapping it up. Before I close off this webinar, um, I wanted to point out uh, these three important um, information here, the documentation, AWS official documentation for the transit gateway. The second one is the quotas. Equally important but often overlooked information is as you go into production and uh, solutioning the architecture, keep in mind the quotas and uh, your requirements. For example, there are five transit gateway um, per account, 5,000 transit gateway attachments per transit gateway, uh, 20 routes, um, etc. So these numbers, some of them can be adjusted and some of them cannot. So keep an eye on those numbers to make sure that you're not hitting those limits as you go into the production. The third one is equally important is the pricing. There are two components, pricing components for transit gateway. One is the per attachment pricing, which is five cents per attachment. And for every one gig that has passed through the transit gateway, it is two cents. Okay. In our example, if you take the AWS account, the left side, there are two attachments. One is the VPC type and another one is VPC uh, on the peering type. However, they still are categorized as attachments, right? So it's constituted as two attachments, which translates to um, uh, 10 cents. And if I transfer one gig through this transit gateway that would be two cents as well okay and keep in mind the data transfer out charges as you're traversing uh, between uh, ACs or between regions and that's especially for for the uh, for the originator account the receiving account may still not have the data in charges okay and that brings me to the end of this session here Hope you found this uh, webinar and the demo useful and would like to see you in the next episode. Thank you very much and have a great day.